Alright, lesson 4.4, analyzing quadratic functions of the form y equals x minus p all squared plus q. In this lesson, what we'll be focusing on is what the a, p, and q does towards our, our quadratic here. Alright, so each one of those things is going to manipulate the graph and move it either up, down, left, and right, or stretch and compress it. So it's kind of one of my favorite lessons because uh, we do a little bit of graphing here and, and definitely I think by the end of this you should have a very, very good understanding of how this all works. So the first thing I'm going to concentrate on here is uh, changing the value of Q or like that. All right. So what is the Q going to do? Well, every time I'm going to uh, manipulate one of the, those letters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, talk about it in terms of the original graph, Y equals X squared. Okay? And so for this graph, I'm always going to uh, do it with red for today. All right? So what you could do here is you could make yourself a table of values if you needed to. All right? Or what we could do is we can just kind of do it in our heads. So imagine if I put 0 in for x and I squared it, you would get 0. If I put 1 in for x and squared it, y would be equal to just 1. Now, if I put 2 in for x and squared it, y would be equal to 4, like so. And the last one I want to do on this side is if you put 3 in and you square it, you're going to get 9. Now the interesting thing is, on the other side, you're going to see it's just going to be reflected. If you put negative 1 in, of course, when you square it, it just becomes a positive 1. When you put negative 2 in, it just becomes positive 4. When you put negative 3 in, it just becomes positive 9. And so this is going to be the graph of y equals x squared. Now, it's very, very important that you get confident with this graph, because we're going to be using it a lot, especially in this lesson. All right? So we need to know a couple different things. Some people like to think of it, instead of just generating the numbers kind of one at a time, notice how this graph goes over 1, up 1. And then it goes over 2, up 4 over 3, up 9. If you keep remembering that, that you just take the, however much you go uh, over and square it, then you should be able to generate all your points. Okay? The next graph here I'll do in blue. So the graph of x squared, sorry, y equals x squared plus 5. Well, really all this is going to do is it's just going to move the graph up 5 units. All right? So the graph is going to start here. For instance, like if you put in 0 for x, you just get 0 when you square it, and then you add 5, you get an ordered pair at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 5. So it's going to look like so. And then the graph is going to look the same as the red one I just did, only you're just going to go from this point. It's kind of like your 0, 0, your origin. You're going to go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Now since that's all I can fit on this little graph that I have, this is a uh, 10 by 10, uh, you can just leave the graph like that. Now I'm going to do the other side. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Okay, and try and graph that like so. Nice continuous line. All right. So that would be that one. So what we're noticing with Q is that Q is going to move the graph up and, as you're going to see in a second, down. Okay. So this graph I'll do in green. What we see here is that we're going to move this one down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I always like to think of the graph as starting with the original red one and then just moving up, down, left, right from there. So I move it down 5. Now I'm going to go and do the normal red graph from here. Over 1, up 1. I'll do it on both sides this time. Over 2, up 4. Okay, make sure you're careful with this. Over 3, up 9. Like so. And now this one's kind of unique. Can we fit another point on there? Well, the next point would be over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 16. Well, since we've gone down 5, this is up 10. 16 would technically be just above right here. So just for kicks, I'll put one more on here just so you can see what that would look like. All right, so ooh, it got a little crazy there. What I've told my students, if you ever miss a point, like I almost missed right here, just make that point bigger. That's a beautiful thing. All right. So what do we see? We saw when Q is positive, the graph is going to move upwards. And when Q is negative, the graph is going to move downwards. All right, so we just focused on the Q. All right, so that's the first thing. Now if we go back up to the equation, we're now going to look at what does this P do for us? So changing the value of P in Y equals X minus P all squared. We're not going to do anything with A or we're not going to do anything with Q, just the P right here. All right, so again I'm just going to graph my regular Y equals X squared. I'll do it quickly for you here. And that's what she looks like. 
And you can probably guess where this is going to be going. If that one took you up and down, we'll see where this one goes. All right, the next graph right here, I'm going to make blue. This one's a little funky, and I'll show you kind of why. Most students think that when you have y equals x plus 5 all squared, that that graph would move in the right direction, 5. It actually does the opposite. Imagine if you were to put in a negative 5 for x. So I'll just put where negative 5 would be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like so. Well, if you go negative 5 plus 5 all squared, you'll notice that you get 0. All right? And so this graph is going to be exactly the same as the red graph that we have here, only it's going to be moved in the negative direction 5. So it would just look like so. So you go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 9. Like so. Okay, so if you want to even make note of that, this moved um, in the negative direction 5. All right, this green one right here, you can probably guess, is actually going to move in the positive direction. Five. Now I'll show you why, right? Imagine if you put in 5 for x, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's the y going to be worth? Well, it'd be 5 minus 5 is 0, 0 all squared. So this is the graph we get right here. So we can see now that the p is going to move your graph left and right, depending on what's in the brackets like this. So this is sometimes uh, tough for students to understand that these are, uh, are kind of backwards, all right? So to explain why this is, all right, if you have y is equal to x plus 5 all squared, what you really have is this. y is equal to x minus negative 5 all squared, all right? And so that's why I'm saying when p is negative, p actually was negative right here, but a negative and a negative makes it a positive, and so that's why the graph, even though you'd expect it to move in the positive direction, it's actually going to move this one left, all right? Now the green one that we have down here, I actually have to take you to the next page, but it's y is equal to x minus 5 all squared. It's actually the same thing as y is equal to x minus positive 5 all squared, like so. And so since it's at positive 5, that actually does move you in the positive direction. It's tough for sometimes students to see this, so this one will actually move right. Okay. The last thing we have to manipulate in this uh, equation is playing around with what A does. So I talked about moving up, left, or sorry, up, down, left, right. Now we're going to look at uh, what A does. So let's start with my original graph. Notice this one's going to have five that you're going to be doing on here. So uh, if you haven't noticed, if you have different colors or uh, even a pen or a pencil, it makes things a little bit easier to be uh, writing down here. All right, so we have y is equal to x squared, like so. You know, if you're starting to get comfortable with that one. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we do this next one. I'll do it in blue. Okay, next one in blue. You still actually have the same point at 0, 0, because if you imagine, if you put 0 in and square it and times it by 2, you still have 0. But when I put 1 in, this is where things start to change. If you put 1 in for x, we go over 1. Well, 1 squared is 1, but times 2, this goes up 2. Okay? When you put in 2, you take 2 squared, but then when you times that, which is 4 by 2, you get now 8. And so you'll see that this graph got a little bit skinnier. Like so. So what we'd say for this graph is that it actually got stretched. Okay. Another way to think of this is notice how um, all the points are still kind of similar here. This one normally goes over 1, up 1, but when it has a 2 in front of it, you just take that height and multiply it by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. This one normally is uh, over 2, up 4, but you take that 4 and you multiply it by 2, you get 8. Same on the other side, like so. So that is the first one. Now what's going to happen when you throw a negative in front of it? Well, if you remember before, we said that the negative is just going to make the graph unhappy. All right. So this graph still starts at 0, 0 right here, and it's going to go over 1, down 2. Over 1, down 2, because it has that 2 in front of it. Next one would be over 2, down 8. So that's what the negative is going to do. You'll see the negative will flip the graph. Okay, so this one's going to be stretched slash flipped. Okay. Let's look at see what happens if we have a one half here. So again, this graph's going to start at zero zero again, and since it has a one half, you would normally go over one, 
but now we're going to cut it in half. This just goes up to a half right there. The next point would be over 2, up 4, normally for the red one, but it's just going to be a half, so it's going to go over 2, up 2. Next one's a little bit more complicated. It goes over 3, up 9 for the red graph. This one's cut in half, so it's going to go over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Okay. So I'll reflect it on the other side here. Like so. And let's see if we can fit any more points on this one. This one's going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So normally for a graph, if you take 4 and you square it, you get 16. Because we cut it in half, this one's going to go up to 8. So we can fit this on the graph. Okay. And that would be like so. This is looking like a beautiful little abstract art picture. Okay. So what we see that happened with this one is we call it compressed. All right, kind of like someone just sat on it. All right, and the next one you can probably imagine running out of colors here. Well, let's do orange. This one's going to be compressed, but just flipped. Okay. So we'll have something that looks like so. This one normally is going to go over one down one, but we go a half and a half. This one goes over one, two, down four normally, but we're going to just do a half of that, like so. Normally it's over one, two, three, down nine, but a half of that is one, two, three, four and a half. Four and a half, and then we said the next one was going to be at eight, like so, and like Okay, so always try to make sure your graph goes to the edge of your page right here. Uh, let's summarize what we found out. When A is positive, the graph opens upward. When A is negative, the graph opens downward. Now these are the parts that are a little bit funky. When A is greater than 1, all right, so as an example of something that was greater than 1 right here, uh, this was greater than 1, that was greater than 1, all right. Sorry, I shouldn't say... Uh, greater than one, I should say that one was, the second one right here was less than one. Um, but whenever you basically have a number that's greater than or less than uh, one or negative one, what you're going to do Okay, when A is greater than 1 or A is less than negative 1, the graph is, well, that was this scenario right here and this scenario right here. What we saw is the graph is going to be stretched vertically. So that's when the graph kind of gets skinnier, all right? So the graph's going to be more kind of elongated like so. All right. When the graph is between 1 and negative 1, that was this one right here and here, the graph is going to be compressed. So, okay. Now, of course, you can probably imagine where we're going to be heading with this, is I'm going to be trying to uh, do all those things to you guys at once. And so this is just a little summary. If you ever want to uh, turn back and uh, try to remember what all these things mean, this summarizes everything that you need to know right here. Okay. So let's uh, give some examples a try. I'm trying with example one. So you may be able to do this one on your own, see what you can do. Uh, otherwise, you can just follow along. So it says, Example 1, graph the function y is equal to x plus 3 all squared minus 2. So I'd first want you to find out where the vertex is. All right? And so remember what this does. This is going to move the graph left 3. This is going to move the graph down 2. All right? So always think of this, as if you need to, as think of it as the opposite. That's the only thing that's going to be opposite. So a lot of students always move that one positive 3, but that's not the case. So we move it 1, 2, 3, right to here, and then down 2. Since there's nothing in front here, we just assume that the graph's going to be the regular one. All right? It's positive, so it's going to be opening upward. So from this point right here, I'm just going to go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like so. And since that's the last point that I can fit on there, you have your graph. Right? And so how I knew how to do those points so quickly, right, the over 1, up 1, is because I'm going back to that original y equals x squared graph. Okay? Knowing that's going to pay big dividends. So that would be the function y equals x minus 3 all squared minus 2. Example 2. Let's try this one. Graph the function y is equal to 2 brackets x minus 4 all squared minus 3. So for this one, always find your vertex first. So I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. Okay, so this means, maybe I'll just break this down. This is right, 4. This is down, 3. And this is stretched by a factor 